Hi and welcome back to another video from Effective Maintenance Dashboards. This video is a video on how to create a KPI and this is one of the most, I guess, fundamental KPIs when you've got a work management system and it's really a, a combination of KPIs. However, they are all a variation on a theme and it's how do you calculate the number of work orders waiting at each workflow status. So how many work orders are at each status? Now that's relatively straightforward in Power BI. However, what isn't as straightforward is if you want to understand how many work orders there are waiting at a particular status for a period of time. For example, more than seven days, more than 30 days, etc. So let's crack on. The first thing I want to do is just a quick overview of the model. So the work order management process um, is split into six different steps in this example here. We've got identify new corrective work, and that's a work order creation process. We then prioritize the work. We then go and prepare or plan the work. Then the work order is scheduled, then executed, and then we capture the history and we close out the work. So that's the six different key status um, stages that we've got in this particular model. And these are the different status codes and we're going to go into them in a bit more detail. But the key ones we're interested in here are work orders that are waiting for risk review and work orders that, that have got a query. And that's going to be work orders waiting approval, work orders waiting planning. So these are work orders that need the, the tasks and the resources, the spare parts, etc. added on to them. Work orders waiting material. So these are work orders which have had spare parts ordered against them and we're just waiting for delivery of those spare parts if they're direct purchase. Work orders waiting schedule, so they are waiting to be allocated at an accurate schedule date. Scheduled means the work order has been scheduled. And then once we start the job it will go into in progress. Then it has been physically or technically complete. It goes, um, it progresses to the status of comp. Then it goes to work orders waiting for quality query. So if we've got some issue with the quality of the history that's been captured against the particular uh, work order, so that could be the, the work order failure codes or any of the history that's been entered or lack of um, information, then we can set this status here. It's then closed, means the work order is now is part of our history and has been archived. And we can also get a cancelled work order. So that gives you a, a feel for the um, the status codes that we're going to be using in this particular example. One thing that's worth mentioning here is that every work management system will have virtually the same type of codes, but there could be additional codes as well, but the, most will have the same type of process. So in terms of requirements, the work order workflow measure. So we're going to look at five work order workflow measures. The first one is going to be work orders waiting approval for greater than three days. The second one is work orders waiting planning. And that one is going to be slightly different in that depending on the priority allocated to the work order, we're going to, we're going to um, add in a, a period of time that's acceptable for the work order to wait, be waiting at a planning stage. Next is work orders waiting for spares delivery greater than 30 days, work orders waiting scheduling for less than 14 days before the target finish date, and work orders waiting history review for greater than 7 days. So let's start with the first definition. Um, in fact, actually, let's go and before we start with that definition, because these will be the definitions we'll use when we create each of the um, each of the measures or calculated columns. Let's start by going across the Power BI. So we're we'll open Power BI and the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go and get some data. So we're going to go in here and I'm going to go to uh, work orders waiting approval data and we've got some work order data here. So this is a an extract from a CMMS. Now, this data is data that I've made up, but typically it's the, the same fields that you will have if you um, extract data from your CMMS. 
And the first thing we're going to do is import the table here. That information will be loaded into the system. Shouldn't take long, it's not a big file. And here we can see we've got our list of work order related fields. So we've got the work type, we've got the, the description of the work order, we've got the work order number, we've got a scheduled date, a target, finish date. So these are the t disciplines and d departments. These are the types of um, equipment that's raised against. So these are the type of um, fields you would see typically in a work order. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create uh, some calculated columns. So calculated columns are additional columns that are added into the actual data model and they will be added to each row in the data model. So the first one we need is looking at how many days the work order has been at the current status. So I'm going to go in here. Here we go, new column. And we're going to call this days at current status. And it's going to be equal to, we're going to use a function, give ourselves a bit of space here, called date diff. And the date diff function returns a value which is the difference between two dates. Date 1, date 2 and an interval. So if we have date 1 as being the work order type in status, should find it for this. Um, and it's going to be work order status date. So that work order status date is the date that the work order changed to the current status. The other one we're going to look at is going to be the extract date. So in this date, in this data set here, I have an extract date. So that is the um, the date that the data extract date is the date the work order was extracted from the system. So we're going to use that as our dating point. Typically, you would use now so that it, every time you refresh this data, the data is updated. And there is a function called now. If you just put that in here, or And that um, returns uh, a number in, hold on, no, it returns the current date and time. Or we can use, actually today, I think today is only the return, returns the current date in date time format. Okay, so um, either one of those will do. And that would then tell you how many days it is between the date the work order was changed to the current status and the current date. However, because we will not be progressing these work orders. I want to use this data date, data extra date. Okay, and then let's just um, format this a little bit. So the difference, data diff between two these two dates and then we're going to do it in days. And then press enter. So we've created a new calculated column and that's going to tell us how many days the current work order has been at this status. The next thing we are going to do is add another calculated column that actually looks at the work orders that have been so how we're going to work this is we're going to add calculated columns, which are going to be true or false indicators or zero or one indicators that will indicate if the current KPI on the date that we've extracted this data, if the current work order is actually, which KPI pertains to this work order. Okay, so there will only be, the work order will only have one status, so it will only pertain to one particular KPI and we're going to use a flag in our data, in our um, work order variable values table to identify which KPI this work order is related to. And then it, in the future, when we create the measures, we're going to count that number of flags.
Okay, so the next one we're going to create another new column is going to be for the first requirement. So let's look at its definition here. Work orders waiting approval for greater than three days. So number of non-PM work orders which have been at waiting approval status for greater than three days. Waiting approval status is equal to W risk rev or W risk Q. Okay, so that's the kind of business rules behind this. Let's go back to our... So we're going to create a flag here. So it's another calculated column. And this time it's waiting approval greater than three days. And we're going to create an if statement here. Equals. Simple if statement. So if, and then we're going to go straight into an and statement because we want two conditions to be true. And, and then we'll create another statement here. We want the work order days at current status is greater than three. And the work order Days at current status, and uh, not days at current status, status. Work order status in, and we we'll use these curly type brackets because we're going to use in, and it needs, it can accept a, a, a list of values. So W risk rev or W risk Q. Close curly brackets. I think that looks okay. And we'll close the and bracket. And then, so that's a logical result. And if it's true, then we're going to be one. If it's false, it'll be zero. And then we'll close the if statement. Okay. Leave that. And leave that to work away for a second. That's that done. Okay, so let's bring this across in the next. Well, actually, now we need to create a measure. So the measure is going to count the number of work orders awaiting approval. So we can go in here and create a measure. And that measure is going to be waiting approval greater than three days. We put the units here, count. And we're going to calculate, use a calculate statement. And we're going to calculate the count of rows. And the table we're going to count is going to be work order variable values table. And it's going to be where, so there's a filter value there. So the expression is a count of the table rows. And the expression is, or the filter, is going to be work order variable values. And we are looking for the flag, which is wait and approval getting in three days, equals one. And then we're going to close this calculate statement there. Right. So that's going to calculate the number of rows in the table where the work order variables in the work order variables value table where the number of or where the waiting approval for greater than three days flag equals one. So then with that measure we can pull it into here and we can change that to a card and we can see there's 40. So there's 40 work orders which have been waiting approval for greater than greater than three days. Now, another thing I want to pull in here is the number of work orders. So we can simply add in a status code here, work order status, and we can add in the number of work orders, work order number, and that is currently 
got this um this sum um symbol here which is actually summing up the work orders now we don't want those work orders to be summed we want them to be counted so you can go into work order number and we can add in here count okay so here we can see that we've got if we just wanted a simple report that that outlined the number of the work orders at each status then this is it this is it it's quite straightforward however we do want to add this caveat that we're only interested in those that have been there for greater than three days so as work orders with approval for greater than three days and that is a combination of these work orders here waiting risk risk query and these work orders here waiting risk review so there's 54 in total but only 40 have been there for greater than three days and the other thing we can do here if we wish is add this in and we'll see those two we'll see those here because we've used calculate it's it's basically ignoring any of the other filters here and just showing the the figures that we've asked it to show okay so that is the the first video in this series and we've just put together the starting point for the kpi that shows us the number of work orders that have been waiting approval for greater than three days in the next part we will add in some additional rules for the work orders which have been waiting planning. I'll talk to you then.